Hey everybody, welcome to the Rock and Metal Guardian. I am Dane, your host. Hope you're having a fine day wherever you may find yourselves. In my previous video, I talked about my top 25 favorite comeback albums of all time. Today, I'm going to talk about the pseudo comeback album. And what I mean by that are albums that are highly praised or regarded or considered by many to be comeback albums, but in my estimation are not. So let's go ahead and jump right in. There's no order here. So, the, But the first album I want to talk about is the Rolling Stones' Tattoo You. I like this album a lot. This is the two CD version, and I like it even better with the extra bonus tracks. But as you may know, the original disc and the songs on the first disc were songs that were recorded in other sessions, and they were thrown on a new record to fit perhaps a contractual obligation with the record company. Um, so one minute, they're not good enough to go on previous records, but they're good enough for their own album. And that's not a criticism. That's just how it was or how it is. And I'm glad they put this out as an album because I, I like this. However, I don't consider this a comeback album as many do. I consider the Stones' true last great album to be Some Girls. Um, anyway, next is Counterparts by Rush, and this is, according to Alex Lifeson, where they got heavy again. Well, yes and no. Um, it's heavy in parts, but I, I wouldn't call it heavy in the, in the sense that we most think of the word heavy. Um, I like six of the 11 tracks here, or five and a half. I like Animate. I like Stick It Out. I like Double Agent, I like Cold Fire, I like Leave That Thing Alone, although as it compares to other uh, instrumentals, it's my least favorite of the ones that they have, but I will listen to it from time to time. It has its moments, and depending on my mood, I like Nobody's Hero, um, but I don't consider this a comeback album because on one hand... While Roll the Bones isn't that good of an album, I only like three of the 10 or 11 songs in there. The three songs that I do like are better than anything on here. Um, if we talk about um, Presto, where I only like two songs, those two songs I like much more than anything on here. If we talk about Test for Echo, I only like the first two songs, which I think are much better than anything on here, etc., etc. So in my estimation, this is not... A comeback album at all for me in my previous video it's vapor trails now next is the painkiller album by Judas Priest um, and many regard this as a comeback album because the the two previous albums turbo and ram it down were very or highly disappointing and I while I agree with th that they were disappointing and I do like this album I still don't think it's a comeback album because while it's superior to those two albums, it's still not good enough to be, in my estimation, considered a comeback album. Because for me, a comeback album, it has to be a true return to form and it has to be better than average or better than solid or better than good. It has to be very good, great, amazing, masterpiece or legendary. And this is not, none of those. Um, I, again, I like it, but it's not. And I think why so many people consider this a comeback album, because when you compare it to the two that become comes before, this seems like a peach. Um, it's not. It, it's Again, I like it, but it's, it's not a peach, so to speak. Um, my true comeback album, as if you saw the last video, was um, Redeemer of Souls, which I love start to finish. And while we're on the topic of painkiller... Um, one of the things I dislike about this is I, I wish that Halford would still sing in the vein that he did on the albums leading all the albums leading up to and including Defenders of the Faith. He changes his vocal style a little bit. The, his phrasing is off. The way he he stresses, especially I don't I like the songs on here except for one. I don't like the song Touch of Evil, and because on that one it's the most where he phrases words in a way I don't like, like, like the way he stresses the syllables in the, in the, in the song, or rather the, the, the title, a touch of evil, those, a touch of those five syllables, the way he phrases those, I don't care for at all. So it has something to do with that. Um, 
Next is the, the Division Bell by Pink Floyd. And I don't consider the two David Gilmore-led albums to be Pink Floyd albums at all because um, they don't have the chemistry and feel of Pink Floyd. And it's not just because Waters is gone. It's just that lack, and Wright's not on um, Momentary Lapse of Reason, and I think he's back for um, Division Bell. And The Endless River, for me, personally, that, 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 that's, that's a joke, and many people have... Uh, have, have panned that as well, uh, fans and critics alike. Um, but having said that, I, I'm I'm also going to throw in that I don't consider the final cut to be a true Pink Floyd album, and Waters is on that one, and the whole band is, because that was that that is just too much of a Waters solo album disguised as a Pink Floyd. The same way that the two that follow that Division Bell and um, Momentary Lapse of Reason are Gilmore solo albums disguised as Pink Floyd. And so for me personally, the last great, true great Pink Floyd album is The Wall. And you might be saying, well, hey, Dane, that was supposed to be a Waters solo album, but it's not. Now, I don't know, to, and here, here's the explanation. Now, I don't know to what extent the other three members of the band, Wright, Gilmore, and Mason, contributed to the writing, whether lyrics or musically. Um, if they didn't at all, it's still a Pink Floyd album because they play on it, Okay. Remember, well, or if you don't know, the the story that most of us Floyd fans know, if not all of us Floyd fans know, is that when um, Waters was working on an idea for a solo pro project, he had The Wall and Pros and Cons of Hitchhikers already in, in, in the beginning stages, if not intermediate or intermediate stages, and he wanted to he wanted to do another Floyd album with his bandmates, but right especially Wright, but Gilmore and Mason were also dealing with writer's block, especially Wright. He was the one who was, you know, saying that the well was dry and that sort of thing. So Waters showed him what he was working on, and they picked the wall, thank God, because I don't think the pros and cons would have been a good Pink Floyd album. Thank God that's a solo album. And But anyway, so all four members play on that album, so that's a true Floyd album. Um, but again, I don't like... I don't like the Division Bell and... I'm sorry, I don't consider the, the Division Bell and Momentary Lapse of Reason true Pink Floyd albums, so those cannot be comeback albums. And definitely, the final cut cannot be a comeback album for the reason I already mentioned. Now, I like moments of the final cut. I don't like Momentary Lapse of Reason at all. I do like a bit of the final... I'm sorry, I do like... God bless you, little one. My cat sneezing. Um, sorry about that. I do like moments of the Division Bell, but I will not listen to it anymore. Or I should say, there are moments of the album that are good, but I I won't listen to it anymore because um, it's just Gilmore being bitter about the whole schism between him and Waters, and and I'm not throwing Gilmore under the bus here because I think both Gilmore and Waters are both equally to blame uh, for the fighting that tore the band apart. So I'm throwing them both under the bus, so to speak. Um, I still um, love them as musicians, and I'm so grateful for the music that they gave us as, 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 in, in, as, short, as, as short as Pink Floyd was as a band. Um, it could have been longer, right? But essentially what I'm saying is I'm not going to side with either one of them. I think they both... Um, um, they're both right in many ways, but they're both wrong in many ways, and I'll leave it at that. Um, so Pink Floyd, The Division Bell, and Momentary Lapse of Reason I don't consider to be comeback albums. And those of you who, who side with Waters, let's say, who think um, that The Final Cut is a comeback album, well, it can't be a comeback album because The Wall was so great, right? And, well, okay, let's say you don't like The Wall. There are people, um, I'm sorry, The, the Wall is, is superior to The Final Cut in so many ways. So um, let's move on to Yes is 90210. And um, there are two pop songs, essentially a pop album all around. You have Owner of a Lonely Heart and Leave It, which are the two pop hits from the album. But this is not the Yes I Know and Love. Um, and some have claimed Drama to be a comeback album. I'm not sure why. The only song I like on that is Machine Messiah. Uh, but anyway, so the, the last albums that I like by Yes are... 
whichever one came last, Tormato, which isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, or um, Going for the One, which isn't perfect either. Um, so I don't think Yes has a comeback album. Um, there's some later stuff that people may argue, like Magnification or Anderson, Wakeman, Bruford, and Howe, that, that kind of thing, but not for me. Um, Uriah Heep's Wake the Sleeper. I remember so so many of my friends who like Uriah Heep saying, oh, you got to get this. And I have it. I have the box set. A couple years ago, a couple summers ago, I purchased the the box set uh, that has every, not, of course, this is before the new album came out. So it has everything but the new album in it. Um, and so it's like, finally, I got Wake the Sleeper finally, which I had heard before. Um, but it was out of print unless you bought the box set. So I bought the box set. And then, and then I listened to it again, and I was like, oh, this isn't as good as I remember. Um, so I put it away, and then I went back to it a bunch of times. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's mediocre at best. The, the first time I heard it, I was all enthralled by, by the title track that opens, and then, and then for some reason I was enthralled by the rest of the album. But I listened to it now, and I was like, it's, it's, it's just okay. And the problem with Wake the, Wake the Sleeper, the title track, is that it's an incomplete song. It's missing a pre-chorus or a chorus, or it's just the chorus repeated. It's some, or it's missing the bridge. It's it's an incomplete song, and it's got its heavy moments. But it's if you listen to it, there's there's part of what you part part of what you put in a regular song according to the the formula. You know, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, bridge, etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's missing the bridge. I think so. It's an incomplete song, and, and as I said, it just it in my musical whatever. It's just not the same as I thought it was. So. And that happens for me. Well, I talked about when it came when it comes to Uriah Heep, what my comeback albums are. There are two in my previous video, so take a look at that if you haven't seen it already. Metallica's Death Magnetic. Um, when I first heard this, I was like, "Ah, oh, this is not bad. This is much better than the, than the, the Load and Reload albums. Um, it's not as good as the Black album. I kind of liked it." And then the EP came out, Beyond Magnetic. It's like it's kind of more of the same. I can kind of dig this. I listen to it now. It's like. Um, I, I, it's kind of like Wake to Sleeper all over again, um, just not as good as I remember, and I, 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 I would put it down and pick it up and not do anything for me, but many have hailed this as a great comeback album for me, it's not, I only like the first five Metallica albums, and plus Inna Morata from the new album, and that's it. Um, this is going to upset a lot of people, the Kiss album Revenge, I remember seeing the album cover, it's got the great steel brick look, steel brick looking wall with the the great kiss logo we know and love and on the back the four gentlemen wearing their long leather trench coats they look super cool in that right but you got some cheesy songs here you got god gave us uh, rock and roll and the super the, the worst song on the album the super cheesy song i just wanna and if you if you listen to the song carefully or hum it you'll realize uh that this is a uh, they stole the, the melody from the song Summertime Blues. Um, and of course, nothing is cheesier than I just want to, the F sound, I just want to F, I just want to forget you. It's just, just terrible lyrics. Um, uh, the, the second worst would be from the LIU album. You know, um, I'm walking down and I'm minding my own business when this guy looks me up and he looks me down. He says, what bees this and what bees that? And why you got to look like that? I said, hey, man, I am cool. I am the breeze. That That is super cheesy, too. So Kiss post, post Creatures of the Night is, is just not my cup of tea, although there are songs here and there that I like. But overall, um, my friends, again, tell me, oh, man, I'm bartending at this point. You got it. So I listened to it in the car. And at the time, I liked it. But then when I bought it myself, uh, you know, a year later or so, I, you know, I put it off. And then uh, and then I've, in recent years, I've tried to listen to it again. And I find the same to be the same. Um, and then you have uh, Take It Off is cheesy. Um, go figure. The title tells it all, right? And then Unholy and Domino are okay, but they're mediocre at best. And then the rest of the I like Car Jam because it's Eric Carr, but the rest of it you can I don't like at all. So anyway, uh, the next one's also going to make some people angry, but again, it's just an opinion. Um, I'm not here. It's not meant to be personal. It's just a person's taste. Anyway, Motley Crue's album Doctor Feel Good. I love the intro to the title track, um, but I hate the phrasing from from Neil. Um, Vince Neil, um, all right, that kind of, just no, um, I like the guitar playing on the whole album, but that's all I like about the album, so 
not good enough to be a comeback album for me. Um, Journey's Trial by Fire. You got 10 or 11 songs. The last song is a reggae song. I, I don't like reggae music at all. Um, what's worse is when punk bands try to be reggae. Um, um, just just not my cup of thing. And um, But Trial by Fire, the first four or five songs... The album seemed like promising that was going to be a great album start to finish, but it's not. But I do love those first four or five songs. Though that's the journey from a melodic hard rock. Well, there, it's melodic. It, there's no hard rock there, but it's it's melodic stuff that I really like. Uh, maybe Steve Perry should have done a, a solo EP or album. Um, but those, you know, those I just love those first four or five songs. But it's not good enough to be a comeback album. Uh, King Crimson, uh, Discipline. I, I'm this when I heard this, I was like so disappointed. I knew John Wenton was out of the band, but I, I hoped for something in a similar vein. And and I and, and I get that so many artists, uh, Robert Fripp included, want to reinvent themselves, but it doesn't work for everyone. It works for Bowie. It works for Prince. It works for Lou Reed. It works for Nick Cave. It works for Tom Waits. It works for Leonard Cohen. Um, not that I like all of those. I like some of the, some of those names. Uh, a couple of those I don't like at all. But a few, some of those I like some of their stuff, and and some of their stuff I don't like. Um, but as far as discipline goes, okay. And I love Adrian Blue as a person and as a guitar player. From what I know of him as a person, from what I've heard, right, he seems like a nice and cool guy. Hey, who doesn't like someone who likes the Beatles, right? Um, but. Okay, you can make your guitar sound like an elephant. I, I don't care. Um, Thela Hun Junjit, gibberish, uh, no. Okay, you 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 sound like the talking heads now. Yeah, you sound better than the talking heads because I cannot stand the talking heads. But I, th this is a far removed from the King Crimson I know and love. Of those three talking head style song albums, I like three of a perfect pair better because you have Lark's Tongues and Aspic Part 3. And Bill Bruford is back in the band at that point. Um, and, of course, you have the song Indiscipline, which is actually quite good. But the so you have the song I Repeat Myself Under Stress. I repeat myself. Da -da 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 no. Um, and then some people have hailed Thrack as a King Crimson comeback album. I actually like Thrack better than Discipline. But there's still, stump there's still something missing. So for me, that's not... A comeback album either Chicago 16 you got stay the night essentially a pop album with a heavy metal guitar solo um, it's fun I haven't listened to it since, since my MTV days um, I only liked really the Terry Kath uh, era of Chicago so for me this isn't a comeback album at all um, T-Rex's Dandy in the Underworld a great title track on that album but the rest of the album I don't like and it's so disappointing and every once in a while I go back to it and I listen to it. And I'm like, the rest of it just does not move me at all. And that that title track is just it would fit it would fit perfectly on tanks, right? And maybe some other stuff, but it just just does not. And and the last album I like by T Rex is actually Tanks as well. Um, the Blue Eyed Soul stuff that he does just does not do much for me at all, if anything. So. And and I I love that early. I don't I, well. Let me take that back. I don't like the folky T Rex stuff that much, except for um, it's got stars in the title, and then the glam stuff I love, and I like parts of Futuristic Dragon, maybe half of it. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, next is Perpendicular by Deep Purple. Um, I am not one of those people who won't give another guitar player or singer or bass player coming into the band replacing someone else. For example, I love what Jolyn Turner brought to the table for Rainbow. Not so much with um, uh, Difficult to Cure. I like some of that, but I love what he did with Straight Between the Eyes. I don't care much for um, Bent Out of Shape. But at least on that one album, this is a Rainbow album I, I can enjoy and embrace as you know, just a solid rainbow album. But um, if we talk about Deep Purple now, um, Steve Morse, I admire him as a guitar player and I especially admire him, his character, because he quit Deep Purple so that he could take care of his 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 uh, 
his sick wife in. So my heart and my prayers go out to him and his family, and especially his wife, of course, into him having you know to deal with such you know a tragic thing. Um, but if we stick to the music, um, I never thought Steve Morris fit in with Deep Purple in their style of music. I thought Steve Morris fit in much better with Kansas, and I wish he had stayed with Kansas uh, longer. Uh, because while I'm not a Dixie Dregs fan either, um, the style of music that, that has that southern vibe to it fits in with Kansas much more. It doesn't fit in very well, I think, with Deep Purple, as I said. And when it comes to Deep Purple post-Perfect Strangers, um, there's not much there for me that I like. I like a couple songs on Abandon. The only song I like on House of Blue Light is uh, Bad Attitude. That would have went well with the previous album. Uh, I don't like Battle Rages on at all. Uh, there's just no chemistry, and that's because probably the fighting between Gillen and Blackmore. And then once Blackmore leaves, um, it doesn't. And and, and Don Airy, great, but great uh, keyboardist, but he doesn't hold a candle. Uh, he can't compare to John Lord. Um, and then if we talk about people say perpendicular, catchy title as a comeback Deep Purple album, yeah, I like Ted the Mechanic a little bit, but overall it just doesn't do much for me. Um, and then the new guitar player, forget his name, is supposed to be more in tone and style of Blackmore, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but but Gillen's voice is shot, so but, but we'll see. Um, next is Aerosmith's Permanent Vacation. I, I, I don't like anything past done with mirrors and done with, and I'm being generous there because the only, there's maybe two songs I like on that and um, let the music do, in, do the talking, which is a Joe Perry project uh, song originally redone by the, the whole band is mediocre at best. And I forget the other song that I like, but the last great Aerosmith album, Aerosmith album that I like is um, Rock in a Hard Place. And I, I like the album uh, start from. I think it's awesome from start to finish. I think it's solid. Sorry, I think it's fabulous and amazing from start to finish. Near, n- n- dare I did, do I dare say masterpiece? Maybe. I, I'm, I've been thinking about that for a while now. Anyway, um, and why why I don't like Permanent Vacation is because it's a pop band now. They're a pop band now. And and thanks to Desmond Child um, in them getting in the band getting outside songwriters. And I, I, I remember reading an article or hearing something, maybe it was YouTube, who knows, or a magazine, that for years and years now, the band have been trying to get Steven Tyler to go back to their roots, and he won't have none of it because he likes the money the band's getting from being a pop band because that's what sells the most, unfortunately. Um, but there's one of him and four of them, so I, I don't get why... They can't pressure him in some way. They try with honking on Bobo, and, and that was a failure as well. So maybe they don't, they don't have anything left in the well but horrible um, pop songs. Anyway, the next is The Razor's Edge by ACDC. I just like Thunderstruck, and that's it. Um, next, and that's all I have to say about that. Next is Supernatural by Santana. This is not a Santana band album. This should be a Santana solo artist album. If you go onto Wikipedia and look up Santana's discography, Supernatural is listed in the discography for the band, not the solo artist. Here's the problem. This is like a tribute album, but with Santana playing on it because he has all of these outside guests coming in to sing and play. You have the guy from, um, uh, I forget his name now. You have the guy from, anyway, it's Rob something. Anyway, so I, it's the song Smooth. I can't remember the name of the singer. That goes to show you how much I like the song. So, and while you have some Latin beats that are kind of cool and catchy and you can dance to Smooth Right, I, I would dance to that. It's still not a Santana Band album, so that should be a solo album. So that, to me, is not a comeback album. Um, Queen's Right, Condition Human. While Todd Latour appears on the album before that, the first album with the band, the self-titled Queen's Right, then he comes on Condition Human, then the one after that, which I forget the name, which has a return to that creepy logo, lo- that creepy logo, Phantom figure, right, in red this time. 
uh, that you see on the warning that became their logo for the rest of the albums. And then the new one has like the, the typical logo, but it looks like DNA strands. Um, I've tried so many times to like these and it's just not working. So I've given up on that. If it's not working, it's not working. But um, the, the the first one, Queen Drake, Queen Drake with Tyler Tor, I thought was dull, boring, and droll. And then this one, Condition Humans, a little better, but there's still something missing. It's just the chemistry's gone. Um, anyway, for me, uh, finally, um, Crash of the Crown by Styx. Some have hailed this as a comeback album. Some have even called Cyclorama. Uh, a comeback album. I've listened to both of those many times, and I'm not feeling it either. I don't get it. Um, I haven't liked a Sticks album since Paradise Theater. So there you have it, everybody. These are, in my estimation, pseudo comeback albums, comeback albums that are not true comeback albums because they're not worthy to be considered comeback albums because they're just not good enough. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Take care now.